Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a certified quantum soul guidance, galactic astrology, soul reader and Reiki master teacher. In today's video, we will be tuning in to 2024, looking through the lens of all the planetary retrogrades of 2024 and examining the star influences, the galactic influences, and really what this feels like. I'm like, I don't know why I'm drawn to <laughs> look at retrogrades right now for looking at 2024, but what's being revealed to me is that these retrograde periods are periods where we are integrating the archetypal energies of the psycho-spiritual functions of the planets, as well as the archetypal energies and themes of the stars and these cosmic anomalies, just portals of higher consciousness out in space so looking at the retrogrades and their alignments to the stars and to these super cosmic points it's just seeing how it all connects it's showing it's revealing these windows of star consciousness integration that we have the opportunity to seize and take advantage of over the course of 2024 to really invite in the higher frequencies of learning and integration and higher consciousness so that we may evolve into more of who we truly are, what we're capable of as individuals and as a collective. These are opportunities and moments of integration and looking at the star influences is just beautiful to see how very deeply supported we are in this work and kind of what's on the agenda. <laughs> what are we learning next year? Let's dive in. Before we look at our first retrograde, planet by planet, you'll see I have it all organized for us. I want to invite you to a monthly new moon distant Reiki share. I offer it every month, every new moon. It's celebrating the new moon in whatever sign it is. So depending on when I am sharing this video, when you're seeing this video, if you just check my website, taylornorrisreiki.com in the events tab, you can see what is the next one of these and you're welcome to join us. It's an opportunity to directly experience the current cosmic energies of that particular new moon and everybody is welcome. There's no Reiki experience required or anything like that and it's completely free as well. All right, so in this video, we're going to cover all of the planets, Mercury, Mars, Venus does not go retrograde in 2024, so we're not looking at Venus. We're also going to cover Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. We're not covering Chiron or any of the Kuiper Belt objects or any other retrograde periods. We're just sticking with the main planets, including the outer planets as well. So Mercury, Mercury goes retrograde four times over the course of 2024. What I have mapped out here is the first three of those retrogrades. In the next slide, I will show you the final retrograde, which arguably uh, is going to be the most powerful one of them all. So to get the most out of this video, I will also say, have your notebook handy, have your calendar, your diary. You might want to take some notes. I show you exact dates. I show you exact degree points. Feel free to pause the video anytime so that you can write down when these retrogrades are happening and then the degree points as well and you can look in your chart 
what of your planets and points and angles and so on will be affected by the retrograde periods, if any. Chances are that some of them will because we have a lot of different retrogrades to look at today. I will also say in terms of the start dates, I used my location, the Big Island of Hawaii for those start dates. So if you're in Southern Hemisphere, Australia, New Zealand, some of you will have a different day. So it's going to be around the day that I say if it's off a day, it would be the day afterward for some of you. So definitely keep that in mind. I don't include the times, but I do include the dates. And like I said, if you're used to our always being a day ahead, <laughs> you're probably a day ahead for, for at least some of these. So keep that in mind as well. But you get a good ballpark idea of when these are happening down to about a 24 hour period or so. All right, with all of that said, our first Mercury retrograde, well, friends, at the time of this posting, we might be in it right now. It might have already happened. Again, I haven't decided when I'm posting this video, but it started at the end of 2023, right after the new moon in Sagittarius. Mercury went retrograde December 12th at eight degrees Capricorn, 29 minutes, and it will station direct January 1st, the first day, the first day of 2024, Mercury is direct. And it is interacting with, it's been interacting with this constellation of Fuchsia, which is the picture up here in the top left-hand corner, and particularly the star, Raz Oheg, and I learned Raz is the word that means head. So there are a couple heads in the sky. There's another one, Raz Al Getty, and then there's Raz Oheg. And Raz Oheg is the healer. He's the man in the sky holding the snake. And there have been many stories about him. I have been sharing about the Greek story, which links him to the mythology of Asclepius, the very talented healer, so skilled he could actually bring the dead back to life. So Mercury, our minds, our mental bodies, our lower minds, giving us this portal, this window of consciousness into our own innate healing abilities and it may even be compelling us to study, to spread, to investigate, to teach, or to learn various methods of healing, certainly to practice any methods of healing we already know. And if we're looking to expand our toolkit of healing, maybe learning additional or deepening whatever healing arts we're already engaging with. Mercury makes exact conjunctions with Razzle Haig's star on November 25th, December 30th of 2023, as well as January 5th, 2024. So this is just a wonderful healing time, a wonderful time to really allow the reprogramming of your mind. These Mercury retrogrades are all about reprogramming our mind, our communication, our learning, our thinking, our teaching, our speaking, our listening even. Venus could be thought of as that listening function as well, but a, a big part of communication is the receiving of the communication and the listening and noticing, noticing. I've been noticing details of the communications I receive and which ones feel like really good and respectful and which ones might not feel that way. And, and I notice, you know, I notice if an email does not start with some kind of greeting, you know, like that has a vibe versus an email that starts with a greeting or an email even that starts with just your name and a comma. I mean, how easy is it just to say, hello, Taylor, <laughs> right? If you're already going to put my name. <laughs> This is true story from today. So real life, this is astrology in real life. So paying attention to our communication and harnessing the power of our communication to be healing and engaging in healing forms of communication. I think our world really needs a lot of help with 
the healing of communications. And what's so interesting is we see this energy activated the end of 2023, the beginning of 2024, and then it comes back around because that's what Mercury does. He finishes his work. So at the end of 2024, on the next slide, I'll show you Mercury circles back again and makes additional contact with this particular star. Then we have another Mercury retrograde in April, April 1st to the 25th, starting at 27 Aries, ending at 15. Aries. And in the mix here, actually after Mercury will be making a conjunction with Andromeda Galaxy. However, it is within orb at this station degree where Mercury appears to stop from our perspective on Earth that really I was feeling that we're going to get a pulse, an injection, a flavor of that Andromedan frequency when Mercury stations. And that this Andromedan frequency is all about fluidity and anchoring our consciousness within ourself, really being self-referencing in our thinking, in our mind, in our consciousness, like radical inner authority activation. And what was also coming through about this is like, this is right brain activation big time. Many of us operate too much out of that left brain and the left brain is touted and held on a pedestal as like the one that, you know, matters and is the one that has a seat at the table and the right brain. Well, we kind of tolerate it, but it's really not as valuable. In certain circles, it's like, the, it's all about the right brain. So I'm seeing like, you know, whichever way we might be on the spectrum of left brain to right brain, that this is going to be a helpful influence of the right brain in the whole brain working together as this Andromeda galaxy influence comes through our minds through Mercury. And I show on this map here, you see it's kind of near the Pegasus. This is Pegasus constellation here. And right out here is Andromeda galaxy. It's in that path. It's in that position. It's not like in the same place, but it's in that direction. We can think of it that way. And I think even during this retrograde, we may gain a better understanding of space, time, dimension, reality, and like how, how we can organize our thinking in a nonlinear way to be able to expand our minds to perceive more of reality how it really is and even like the pictures and things that I'm using in my slideshows these are like just to give you something because <laughs> I'm super visual I'm like I need to see it I'm clairvoyant I've got the the vision and so I want to convey the visions but don't be limited by any of the visuals that I show here they're just to kind of spark some things. What really matters is that inner vision and what is being revealed to you and through you. The third Mercury retrograde of the year is August 4th through August 28th, interacting with the degrees starting at four degrees Virgo, six minutes, retrograding back to 21 degrees Leo in 24 minutes. And Mercury will not be aligning with any of the major stars that I study. I don't study every single star because it would be too many. There are stars there that we're not even aware of, let alone have an astrological meaning associated with them. The final Mercury retrograde of 2024 starts on November 25th at 22 Sagittarius, 40 minutes. And remember again, this, this most recent Mercury retrograde of 2023 is interacting with that same degree, activating Razzle Haig on January 5th, 2025. And <laughs> you know, that's going out a whole other year. So we're going to get another dose of this Razzle Haig healing energy at the end of the year. 
What's really, really, really powerful here, though, is that in addition to the razzle hag, the healing frequencies, we're also getting triple activations of Royal Star Antares in the heart of the Scorpion, the heart of Scorpio constellation, Scorpius constellation. We're also getting a three hit, three activation of the great attractor, which is a, a cosmic anomaly, a magnetic, a divine magnetic phenomenon out in space beyond the Milky Way galaxy, beyond this vast portion of space organized by the super galactic center, the great attractor organizing the entire galactic local area of Laniakea, immeasurable, immense heaven so this is an extraordinarily powerful point to be interacting with mercury and mercury really i mean this is so deep y'all this is so deep this is combining it with razzle hag too like the potential for healing for channeling for really deepening our knowledge in a subject in ourselves you know one of the ways of looking at mercury with antares according to bernadette brady is mental obsession with a person or a subject. So that's kind of the thing to watch for, <laughs> okay, friends, stalker friends, like, come on, tone it down, tone it down, okay, turn it down, no need to be obsessive in an unhealthy way, but, you know, directing your passion into a field of study or even self-study in a healthy way. Uh, studying a certain subject that you're then going to be sharing for others, using in a service to others kind of way. This is so, so powerful. And I think has the opportunity also with Razzle Haig influence being in the field to heal any obsessive tendencies I think we have within us and release them, bless them into the divine magnetism of the great attractor to let them go and release them from the imprint within our soul and within the collective consciousness as well. With the alignments to the great attractor, this is divine mind, mental magnetism. So really, it's always a good idea to be mindful during this retrograde, I would say be extra mindful. Thoughts create form. Thoughts create your reality. This will be heightened if you're obsessing, obsessing, obsessing about running into a particular person you don't want to see or having a particular outcome happen that you don't want to happen. Or, you know, it's around the holidays too that, oh, Thanksgiving is going to be a disaster. Christmas is going to be a disaster. I'm going to gain so much weight and be unhappy healthy over the holidays or something like don't go there <laughs> like reorient your mind into whatever affirmation is resonating with you you know i am attuned to the divine magnetism of the cosmos you know i'm attuned to the divine magnetism of the source of all that is whatever affirmation have have one ready have three ready to just kind of roll through or whatever other way you can focus your mind I'm a Reiki teacher so I can focus on a symbol I can invite Reiki I can tune my mind into topics that I want to think about or even have some neutral topics <laughs> you know I can tune into some other interests and things like that. It's going to be really, really potent. And I have on this slide here all the various states when the activations are occurring. The retrograde ends on December 15, 2024. So Mercury will be back direct as we close out 2024, which is good news because Mars is going to be retrograde. Mars retrograde. I have new respect for Mars retrograde after this Mars retrograde in Gemini, if you have planets or points between six degrees Leo in 10 minutes and 17 degrees of Cancer 
you are going to have some Mars retrograde activities. <laughs> Shall be interesting. Mars is all about our will, our drive, our focus, our masculine energy, our motivation, our sense of making it happen. It gets a bad reputation for being the lesser malefic, Saturn being like the big shot malefic, Mars being a more acute kind of like in the moment malefic, and really how I see Mars expressing itself in the shadow and the lower frequencies. I mean, this kind of just dropped in as like the obvious <laughs> what Mars is acutely or can be is stress, stress. So stress and stressors, this can kind of be that lower vibrational Mars energy that, I mean, we are very familiar with in the modern age here. Stress is the number one killer and so on. So with that being said, Mars retrograde starts December 6, 2024. So way at the end of the year, six Leo, 10 minutes, and it will not station direct until February 23rd of 2025. So we end 2024 with this Mars retrograde where we are really reprogramming the masculine energies. And what I'm even feeling this as right now is like the masculine energies may have really had an interesting 2024 and be like, we really need to come back and circle up. How are we going to reorganize ourselves into something that is healthier? Because we have so many massive change energies that are integrating into 2024. So our galactic and star supporters during this Mars retrograde we have several. We have both Castor and Pollux, the twins of Gemini constellation. They are the storytellers, the communicators, always a little bit in competition with one another, trying to outdo one another. So again, with Mars here, it's like, watch for that, right? Collaboration rather than competition and understanding in the new paradigm it will be one of greater collaboration and just seeing that competitive energy diminishing, 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 and only the healthy manifestations of that competition energy remaining the ones, you know, like in games and sports and, and things like that, where it is actually in a playful way, maybe not how sports are played, uh, currently. And yeah, we just have a whole lot of learning to do about a lot of things. And I think Castor and Pollux are going to be nah, 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 nah. <laughs> busy in our ears and wanting to tell us all about it. So Pollux is the twin that has a bit of a harder time. When we have the dual constellations, there's like a duality to them where one has maybe a, a bit of a harder time and one has a bit of an easier time caster, the communication flows, things just work, the stories, the skills, the writing, all of that just flows. Pollux, equally gifted, but has a little bit of a harder time. So we have connections, triple activations with Castor and with Pollux that have all the dates there. Castor in relation to Mars can be a person who plans, a thinker, a solver of problems. This is according to Bernadette Brady. So really having practical solutions come in and making plans. I mean, this can be you at the end of 2024, reorganizing yourself, solving problems that came up and planning for an even better, brighter 2025. Mars with Pollux can be expressing unpopular or even dangerous opinions. So that's an interesting energy, right? And I think we need to hold space for that too. We need to hold space for those unpopular or non-mainstream views, 
for being the odd one out in a group, you know, the black sheep, the scapegoat, that kind of energy, if that is in your field, if there's a part of your consciousness where even your masculine energy is kind of embodying that or taking that on in some way or a shadow aspect of that is coming up, you know, face that part, love that part, work with that, lean into that and just be aware that that's a potential manifestation. We are also having this star activation of Procyon star and Canis minor. We see this beautiful constellation, the little dog here, Procyon star. So Procyon rises before Sirius A. Sirius A is in Canis major, the big dog. Canis Minor, the little dog, Procyon rises before Sirius A. So this can be a sudden rise to fame or opportunities, but it's fleeting. So there might be opportunities coming your way from men, possibly with the Mars retrograde, that you need to seize in the moment if they feel right. Obviously, checking in with your discernment, your intuition, if it's right for you. But don't think that something that's coming up is necessarily going to last. You might need to act on it. That's not to say to be in this pressure cooker and so much urgency and that kind of thing. But if something feels right, this is like the green light. Go for it because that opportunity may be fleeting, the door might be closing by the end of the Mars retrograde period, for example, or maybe even by this April 6th of 2025 when Mars will pass through this degree point directly. So this can also be stops and starts, many changes to one's career or life path. And I thought that was really interesting too, because I know even Already, really since 2020, many of us have been in this change, in this shedding of skins as we find more of our life purpose, our soul mission, maybe exiting, you know, corporate jobs or jobs that were more supposed to be more steady, more stable, more secure, all different kinds of layoffs and changes. And then People who are maybe in more stable and steady jobs, just not feeling that passion or not feeling like it's their purpose to be there. And so, you know, starting their side hustle, starting to work on their passion and learning how to make an income doing those kinds of things, the things that light them up. So there may be more of that by the end of the year where you're guided to make certain changes and know that if this is happening, this isn't, oh, I did something or, oh, I failed. Oh, you know, (laughs) beat myself up about it know that this is like very much on target if this is happening for you and that maybe you are in your purpose there might be some refinements that help you dial in your career even better so more refinements more improvements coming in through this mars retrograde what's also really exciting is that When Mars stations direct February 23rd, 2025 at 17 Cancer, it will be conjunct Sirius A star. Now that is not like the super tightest orb closest conjunction. It's not exact. However, it seems like Mars is reaching all the way, nearly all the way back to the Sirius A. And I love Sirius energy. (laughs) I must say it's one of my special stars. So Sirius A, like I said, the brightest, the brightest star in the sky. I mean, what's not to love? What's not to love? So there can be some major downloads coming through in terms of how to relate to our masculine energy to shine brighter, to shine and embody more of who we truly are and to express that in a very physical way focused, disciplined, structured kind of way. And I know I'm starting to sound a little Saturnian with that, but that's just what's coming through with this serious Mars uh, 
activation here and allowing the mystery schools, the mysteries of life and death and creation, the ascended masters, there may be even closer contact, feeling even closer contact to them at this time through this retrograde period and as it finishes up. All right, our next planetary retrograde series we're looking at is Jupiter. And this one is really, really powerful too. Everyone is like blowing my mind in a good way. And I hope you're feeling excited about these as well. So Jupiter retrograde, okay, maybe already just a little nicer to talk about than Mars retrograde. Jupiter, the greater benefic, this can be a time where we're really internalizing our blessings, we're internalizing expanded information, the expansion of our higher mind, the expansion of ourselves and our experiences through travel and exploration. And this can be an inner exploration that we are navigating through a Jupiter retrograde. So Jupiter stations direct, by the way, at the very end of 2023, December 31st, and will be direct. And I mean, flying through finishing out its transit of Taurus and then entering Gemini in the spring and just charging ahead all year. We have almost 10 months of Jupiter direct and it's it stations retrograde on October 8th at 21 degrees of Gemini. So Jupiter makes its way through most of Gemini and this will be a fresh energy for us. I thought this was just so powerful and potent because it aligns with at least two of the stars of Orion constellation, including Bellatrix in the right shoulder of Orion, as well as Regal in the foot of Orion, who the ancient Egyptians saw, by the way, as Osiris, as God as the divine in the sky. And so Regal really had to do with the protection of the Pharaoh, the one who civilizes. So Regal is very much having to do with protection and learning and knowledge. And aligned with Jupiter can be bravery, whether that's physically or with your ideas. So that could be a manifestation that's coming through this Jupiter retrograde period as it first makes contact with Regal on August 17th. This is when it's going direct November 30th and then in the following year, April 7th, as we go out in the planets, the retrograde periods and how long they take to activate the degree points takes longer. Jupiter will also be in an activating relationship with Bellatrix, conjunct Bellatrix, this right shoulder of Orion on October 3rd. October 14th and April 30th of 2025. Bellatrix is really quite close to where Jupiter actually stations. So those of you with planets or points around this 21 degree Gemini would say 19 to about 23 degrees Gemini, Sagittarius is a very activated degree of the ecliptic of the zodiac. So definitely be aware of this station if you have planets or points here. I think it's going to be a really profound period. And with Bellatrix, this is the feminine, whereas Betelgeuse in the left shoulder is a more masculine energy. Both Betelgeuse and Bellatrix have to do with success. Betelgeuse, the success just comes. It's just apparent. It's easy. There are nearly no real obstacles here. With Bellatrix, the success comes from doing the inner work, from doing the shadow work, from going within, 
for doing that more feminine approach, being that more feminine approach, integrating the feminine side. So again, equally successful. We see the duality kind of like with Castor and Pollux, one one side having a harder time than the other. And really, it's just Bellatrix can reach the same heights of glory as Beetlejuice. She just needs to do her work. And when she does, I would argue possibly her levels of success are defined by her. It's success consciousness defined by her. Whereas Beetlejuice success might be more of a mainstream type of success. Bellatrix, Bellatrix has done her work. So it is success that is by her own definitions. Bellatrix in alignment with Jupiter can be a historian or priest, a person who is more interested in people than in money. So a really service to others kind of capacity, knowledge keeper, priestess, one who is integrating and downloading the secrets of the ancient past and the present and the future in a more multidimensional understanding of time. One other stellar influence that is definitely worth noting will be Jupiter's contact with Aldebaran star in Taurus constellation. Jupiter will be conjunct Aldebaran on July 9th, 2024, so before it stations retrograde. And what's so cool is it basically ends its retrograde period February 3rd, 2025, so the the following year, conjunct Aldebaran. So we get a double dose of it. There's like a preview of it in July, and then it comes back around February 3rd when it ends its retrograde period. So very, very powerful here. Taurus constellation, very powerful. Aldebaran, one of the four royal stars of Persia. Aldebaran aligned with Jupiter can be success and large and noble projects. So something that is requiring a lot of work and is for the highest good of all, this will be very much blessed at this time. And it might be something you're working on, you've been working on earlier in the year and that you really work on and maybe finish up during this Jupiter retrograde period. It might reach its next level of fruition and completion. Aldebaran is also linked to the Lord of Contracts. So in terms of healing work, this may be soul contracts coming up. Again, we've been hopefully working with the soul contracts consciously for a while now, but if this is a new concept to you, this may be a theme of this particular retrograde period, becoming more aware of your soul contracts, your various contracts with the people in your life, the deeper, more spiritual meanings of those. And of course, the practicalities of day-to-day -day contracts and doing business, but relationship contract contracts of all kinds that come into your awareness and ensuring that you are carrying yourself with integrity, with honor, with purity of your thoughts and dealings, because that's where Aldebaran can get into trouble when there's a compromise to integrity, to honor, and to those purity of thoughts and dealings. Aldebaran is also linked to Archangel Michael. So I see Archangel Michael basically overseeing this entire retrograde period. We have so much protection. And that's even echoed again, like I was talking about Regal star in Orion. So a lot of protection coming through Jupiter as a planetary archetypal energy already has to do with protection. So this is like triple activations of Regal, of Bellatrix, and of protection. So this is just, this is really beautiful and this is comforting. I hope this can really bring some comfort to your soul and to your heart and to your mind with everything that may be happening next year, that there is a lot of protection also in the field and to tap into it whenever you are going into anxiety or fear or worry or doubt or those kinds of frequencies and feelings. Good to know we have all that protection because the next energy 
I am sharing with you is the Saturn retrograde and its link to Achernar star in Eridanus constellation. And this one is where I think we're going to see a lot of interesting things at a more mundane level, I do believe, in terms of the environment, in terms of weather, and in terms of also different memories that many of us have in times of Atlantis, of cataclysms on Earth, these traumas, these soul imprints of when the Earth was turning over and having these cataclysmic reset kinds of events, cataclysmic reset events that we've experienced on Earth and that we've experienced on other planets and other star systems as well. So I think there's going to be a big activation of this, and it's really important for us to process our own trauma so as to clear that from the collective field so that the collective field need not <laughs> create externally some kind of trauma drama around some kind of cataclysm or crisis and so on. So if crisis is in the field, know that that is divinely ordered and it's always beneficial to do your own inner work in healing in terms of memories and crises and taking charge and being the calm one in any kind of crisis that may come up. So the Saturn retrograde begins on June 29th, 2024 at 19 degrees, 25 minutes of Pisces. And Saturn will be conjunct at Trinar before it turns retrograde, April 19th, as well as after in the retrograde period on September 12th, and then after it is direct again on January 13th, because it will turn direct on November 15th. 2024. So it's like we get a completion of this Eridanus energy in early January of 2025. I think this Atronar frequency is going to be a theme of the entire retrograde period because again, as we go further out, the planets move slower and slower, covering fewer degree points. Saturn in combination with Atronar star is the leader in hard times, the dictator in good times, a person who needs to lead with care and create flexibility, changes in authority through crises or upheaval. So I think various character, I mean, I'm even getting the download like next year, like United States elections and all of that. That's going to be interesting, kind of what wild cards and you know look at this big scary thing to kind of trigger certain election related political things that may be on this stage of what's happening so we may be seeing some of that and again the opportunity is to be really good to be really grounded and care caring and careful and flexible and in your own authentic leadership dealing with crisis in a skillful way because i think saturn's going to remind us that we do have experience dealing with crisis in a skillful way and we can draw on that soul memory that soul dna and allow that really to activate within our own inner authority because there may be certain savior type figures coming in oh if you just you know let me save the day let me save the day some may be legit some may not use your discernment you know this retrograde is happening in pisces the opposite zodiac sign is virgo use your discernment use your intuition use your own sense of eh, i kind of think this is more of a illusionary thing or no, I think this is really good, but I'm still not going to give my power away. <laughs> okay. I think that's really the key takeaway with this alignment is like, don't give your power away, retain your power, retain your trust in your own inner truth and your own inner authority first and foremost. All right. <laughs> I mean, we already turned up the intensity. Let's keep it going. <laughs> Uranus retrograde. That's going to be another kind of heavy duty one. 
so the first Uranus retrograde, this kind of like blurring into next year, is one that started in 2023, August 28th, 2023, and that will end in January 26th, 2024 at 19 degrees Taurus in five minutes. So by the end of January, we have all planets moving direct. Uranus will be the last outer planet to station direct, but basically from January 26, 2024 until April 1st, 2024, all planets will be direct. Uranus will be moving direct from January 26 until September 1st, 2024, when it stations retrograde at 27 degrees Taurus and 15 minutes, and it will remain retrograde until January 30th, 2025, where it stations direct at 23 degrees of Taurus and 15 minutes. The star energies that are being activated by Uranus include Capulus in the upraised weapon-bearing arm and hand of the warrior Perseus. This is Perseus constellation, as well as Algol in the head of Medusa that Perseus is holding here as well. And over the course of Uranus retrograde, we get three activations of both Capulus frequencies and Al Ghul. So in essence, this entire Uranus retrograde period is interacting with Capulus and Al Ghul, the Perseus constellation energies. What is this all about? Well, first and foremost, both are nebula. They're not actually stars. They are nebula. So really, really interesting. Very powerful. Capulus is the male kundalini energy. It can even be male rage, that male strike, weapon, violence, aggression kind of energy. And then Algol is its opposite counterpart, the female kundalini energy, strong feminine passion, the power of mother nature. So kind of like what we're talking about in the Saturn retrograde with like these storms and like cyclones and tornadoes and hurricanes, that would be like that feminine destructive earthquakes, volcanoes, and so on. That would be kind of this algal frequency, whereas the capulous violence or destruction would be like war and killing in that way, aggression, battle, nuclear warheads, weapons of mass destruction that we create using our technology, like intending it. So with these very activated, we are in for a ride. (laughs) We are in for a ride. Very, very important to be, I think Uranus is going to have us totally reprogram how we relate to our feminine masculine parts, how we relate to our own kundalini energy, our life force energy, how we use our energy, how we receive energy, how we transmit energy, how we think about energy. And really the activation, I think this is like kundalini awakening, whether you want it or not, (laughs) you know, That kind of thing. And, you know, many of us who have said yes to it, maybe having a little bit of an easier time with it and being guides to others who are suddenly like having like spontaneous awakenings, understanding of thoughts coming into your field where friends who thought you were crazy are now coming to you with spiritual questions and interest in these topics. This may be why. Uranus is a planet that is about awakening. It's sudden, it's disruptive. So again, it it could be that some external events in the world trigger a lot of strong spontaneous awakening in the way that in the events of 2020 really woke a lot of people up from their sleep. I'm not saying we're going to have the same kinds of events, but there might be other events in 2024 that serve to awaken those who have gotten comfortable, have gotten complacent. They know they need to make some changes, but they're they're not yet on board with that. So if you took whatever the 
the message was that was coming through in 2020, the you need to make these changes and you need to make them now because look what's happening. Then there's nothing to worry about, I don't think. I think we're going to have kind of like a repeat, like another wave of that kind of energy where there's mass awakening. And a lot of times those mass awakenings are, is not because everything is just rosy. It's because certain painful circumstances trigger awakening. I know that was the story for my own life and my own certain events and relationships that triggered awakening and a big life 180 for me. It was not because I was happy and everything was going really well. It was because there was a lot of pain. This is, is what's coming through right now. <laughs> and I'm just going to send Reiki to it from, from right here. What we can also do with it, I believe, with this algal energy so strong is connect to Mother Nature, be in conscious, active relationship with Mother Nature, in communion with Mother Nature. That can be going into like the nature that is outside, you know, outside outdoors, bringing in nature into our homes and remembering we are nature radically remembering that we are nature too. That connection, it's inside. You can go outside and experience nature, but you can just be in your body and be present and be in nature as well. You are in nature. You are nature. So that would be like the feminine advice. The masculine advice is to focus on desired outcomes. There's going to be a lot of energy. There's going to be a lot of current. There's going to be a lot of surge, a lot of drive, a lot of potency in the field. And again, focusing your awareness on what you want to transpire. So for me, this is like having a big ideal like heaven on earth. Many others talk about the new earth or 5D or something like that. Whatever your ideal is, I'm not here to tell you what that desired outcome is. But I know for me, having a larger collective ideal like that, like having a big vision helps me tune into what is the possibility on a large scale? And then what can I do in my life, in my daily life and how I use my energy to contribute to that? Like right now, right now, right now, next step, one step at a time. So focus on desired outcomes and we'll see what happens. It's going to be a, it's going to already be a powerful Uranian year because Jupiter and Uranus come together. They conjunct in April, April 20th at around 21, 22 degrees of Taurus. So it's powerful. The Neptune retrograde series almost has a bit of a Uranian flavor to it. I feel Neptune will be at the anoretic degree, the last degree of Pisces for a large part of next year. So that already has this energy of completion and ending cycles and spiritualization and dissolution and a whole lot of water too. And already we talked about Eridanus, the river of life in the sky. I don't know if I mentioned that. But Eridanus constellation is the river of life. And then with Neptune transiting the final degree of Pisces, we have some very, very strong water energy. Neptune will be in relationship with the star Shiat in Pegasus constellation, the horse in the sky, one of the horses in the sky. It will be conjunct Shiat on June 2nd, so before it stations retrograde. And then the retrograde will start July 2nd, 2024, at 29 Pisces, 55 minutes. So close to Aries, but not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Neptune will conjunct Shiat July 31st, 2024, and the retrograde period will end on December 7th, 2024, at 27 Pisces in seven minutes. And then there will be three more times in 2025, 2026 that Neptune will activate this last degree of Pisces in specifically activating Shiat. What this has to do with, you see in the constellation in the sky, it's the great magical square. 
the great square of Pegasus. And to the ancients, the square was a symbol of knowledge and technology and advancement. And it also, I mean, it has this patriarchal kind of structure, Saturn, masculine flavor to it. Like we can create stuff and like be organized about it and make structure. This particular star has to do with love of intellect, of logic, of reason, of knowledge. And with Neptune activating it, Neptune is spiritualizing our intellect spiritualizing our logic, our reason. It's dissolving consensus reality paradigms. So again, I was already talking about the Andromeda galaxy influence with Mercury, a lot more of this right brain activation, the whole brain activation, Jupiter, Uranus conjunction and Taurus, like Jupiter expanding Uranus, like forward thinking out of the box, futuristic ideas. I think this Neptune retrograde working with Shiat and Pegasus is also asking us to think way out of the box. And we may have lost the box altogether. The box may be completely dissolved by the end of 2024, or it's it's on its way out of being completely dissolved. In 2025, it's finished off. By the time Neptune exits Pisces and enters Aries, I think there will no longer be a box. <laughs> so this is exciting. I, I honestly think this is going to be beautiful energy to be working with next year. I mean, it's Pegasus. It's a flying horse. It's very magical. It's speed. It's it's exploration. It's again, that divine mind energy as well. So really connecting to the divine mind and having our minds working in a much more integrative, holistic, full brain, full knowledge, closer to our full potential as these marvelous human technological creation vehicles that we are. I think we're going to get quantum leaps closer to what that mental potential actually looks like, not the five or 10% of the brain that most people are looking at. And even just saying that our our knowledge and our intelligence just comes from the brain. I think we're going to understand that that's really not true. I mean, science is already showing that so much of our intelligence and our brain is really in our gut and that the, there's so much of our intelligence. It's not even like you don't have to find some kind of like physical counterpart of it. Like it's our ability to, to tap into infinite intelligence that is part of intelligence as well. And the infinite intelligence is non-physical and it's infinite <laughs> and, and thus unmeasurable. So <laughs> very expansive Neptune retrograde. Uh, by the way, I'm filming this when Neptune is stationing direct on December 6, 2023. So I am under the influence of Neptune right now. That's probably why if this video seems a little disorganized or meandering or something like that, that might be why. I think it's also why I'm able to tap in and tune in so effectively too. So <laughs> hopefully this makes sense. And finally, lastly, Pluto retrograde. Pluto will enter Aquarius, yay, on January 20th of 2024. Thank you very much. It will be moving direct through Aquarius until May 2nd, 2024. When it stations retrograde, it will be close to Altair Star in Aquila the Eagle constellation, one of the three birds in the sky, you see the three birds on the screen here. There's the eagle, Aquila, there's Cygnus the swan. And in this picture, it's not in the picture, but there's actually this vulture energy around Lyra the harp. 
This used to be shown as a vulture or a vulture carrying a heart. So this picture here shows more about how that might look. Pluto will end its retrograde period on October 11th, 2024 at 29 degrees of Capricorn. So there is a time in the latter part of the year when Pluto will be back in Capricorn, but it's just a couple months. During next year, essentially, Pluto will be interacting with making a conjunction with a lad far star in Lyra constellation on January 31st, so right after it enters Aquarius, August 13th, and December 6th. It will also be making a conjunction to Aquila. It's almost conjunct Aquila as far as it gets into Aquarius next year will be May 2nd. And then it turns retrograde, goes backwards, stations direct in October, and it will not completely leave its shadow period. It won't catch up to where it stopped until actually 2025. So we'll get kind of a preview of this Altair energy around May of 2024. And then Pluto comes back around to that degree point three times in 2025. I have it listed here if you want to tune into when those dates are. Pluto in relationship to Altair Star, what was coming through about that is that this is bold, soul-sourced actions of service because this is the eagle you know, the eagle is a symbol in many spiritual traditions. It's a symbol in the United States and many different countries and organizations. It's powerful. It's masculine. It's bold. It's like not afraid. It's daring. And with Pluto, we get the frequency and the energy of the soul. And so how I'm seeing these influences coming together is that the soul directive to take certain actions again realizing that next year there will be some turbulence there will be a feeling of quickness with pluto and aquarius with jupiter entering gemini with other influences as well that we may be making doing kind of like a dance like a quick and decisive kind of dance a bold soul source soul directive activity changes, realignments that are very much on our divine plan. You know, we're not late. We're not showing up to the party late. We weren't supposed to already have done it. The time is now to take those actions. The eagle too, the star has to do with service to others. So maybe it does benefit you, but it's ultimately to be for the highest good of all as well. And a Pluto with good intentions, I mean, that's really what it's all about, the, the highest possible expression of those soul actions. And I think this is even like if there are certain things you've been afraid to do and fears you haven't yet been able to face, it's feeling like you will be supported in facing them, like starting to face them at your next level in 2024. And then in 2025, it's like those fears won't even be fears anymore because you've already faced them. And it'll just be challenges that are within your repertoire to navigate those with greater skill and you'll just keep developing skill around those so really powerful energy coming in through altair with a lad fart this is an interesting star not one where you can find a whole lot of information what i'm drawing from is some of what bernadette brady has written about lyra constellation because I'm looking at this in, you know, a more mundane or practical kind of way, this reading. It's galactic, but, you know, we're not talking about the galactic history so much as like the now part of it, the practicalities of it. Looking at it in that way, from that lens, Lyra has a whole lot of galactic history as well. So I'll just leave it there. With Aladfar, 
what was coming through and with Lyra constellation, Pluto, the soul interacting with this star in Lyra constellation, that this could have to do with spells that cheat death. Pluto also has to do with death and our mortality. Lyra, the harp, the musical instrument has been linked to the music of Orpheus, these musical instruments that can enchant, that are spell binding. And many of us know that, you know, there's so much talk about anti-aging and longevity and also the potential for technology to curb aging, to curb, you know, increase the lifespan and also to cheat death. So I think we may be hearing a lot more of this coming through really throughout the entire Pluto transiting Aquarius through 2044. There's going to be, this is going to be probably one of these Plutonian fascinations that gets a lot of attention. So that might be drummed up to its next level as well. The more spiritual <laughs> manifestation of this not that there's anything not spiritual about spells that cheat death. It's just like, well, what's your understanding of the divine and God and natural law and, you know, organic evolution? And it gets into a whole lot of karma and balance and all kinds of really interesting, deep philosophical existential topics of what does it mean to be human and what our role and then like what are we evolving into and how do we want to be like appropriate stewards of the human species you know let alone planet earth but even like being like stewards and shepherds of humanity and the integrity of the human organism and and learning even like with these galactic frequencies coming in so much more. You know, I've been learning about the microbiome a lot lately, and I keep thinking, hearing about all these microbes in our guts, and, you know, they're all over our bodies. It's like, I'm like, that's our galactic DNA. Those are, that's another way we can think about the galactic being within us. It's like, how many of that microbiome is from Sirius, is from Lyra, is from Aquila, is from, you know, all these Cygnus and Canis Minor and all these different places. Like, I feel like that's our galactic family living within us that we're actually starting to observe physically. And so I think we're going to see more of that really developed in interesting ways. I think a beautiful manifestation of this is our next level and in initiation into becoming the bridge between the mortal and immortal worlds, getting really comfortable being between the veils and allowing separation to dissolve and yet being really like sovereign and clear, but also like I was saying with the gut microbiome, understanding that we are a community, like within your own body, even if you're alone, your community, your community of all these microbes, your community of all these galactic frequencies that help bring the physicality of your body into being. You are in community. I'm in community with all the light beings around me, with all the non-physical energies that are flowing through and transmitting in this video right now. My guides, all of these blessed beings, that are assisting me as I hope to assist you on your journey through 2024 and beyond. So I think this, this understanding that we can bridge between time, space, dimension, all the realms, all the star systems, all the planets, all the heavens of consciousness, all the levels of consciousness, all the densities, I think we're really going to understand this and embody this at a deeper level and like see the connection, perceive the connection. I say see a lot because I see, but perceive in all the different ways that we are gifted and perceiving through our clear senses 
the interconnectivity of humanity, the earth, the galactic creation, the cosmos, the stars, all of it, all of it. So that is it for this video. So I thank you so much for making it to the end. If you're interested in connecting more with me, taylornorrisreiki.com is where to find me, Taylor Norris Reiki on YouTube, on Instagram. Every month you are invited to my free new moon distant Reiki share where we share healing, receive and directly experience the current cosmic energies. I do a variety of readings, Reiki sessions, and Reiki classes, so definitely check that out. Feel free to connect. I am so blessed and grateful and thankful to have you here spending time with me. I consider you my soul family, and I invite Reiki and all of our guides and all of the forces that are conspiring for the highest good of all to bless that 2024 and beyond, that our future is just brighter and brighter and we're able to embody more of heaven on earth and the higher frequencies in our daily life, living more blessed, abundant, and thriving lives every single moment, every single day. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is, mahalo.